Well, welcome back to the channel. Today's been a hot day. Uh, we're in North Texas, and the temperature today is supposed to get up to around 107. That's hot. That's why it's really important that the air conditioning has got to work in this truck. Otherwise, I won't be driving it several months of the year, or when I do, it's going to be kind of miserable. So AC needs to work. Maybe it needs to work in your ride as well. I've checked a variety of ways to wire this. I've looked at everything I could find on the internet, lt1swap.com, a variety of sources. And I came up with a combination that actually I think is a little different than what I found in most of those places. I'm going to show you what that looks like. Uh, uh, the wiring right now is a bit of a mess because I took off a lot of the tape and the little plastic wiring conduit so that I could track each wire down use my continuity tester to make sure the wires I had were correct. I've tried this a number of ways that did not work. I found the combination that did. I need to tidy it up a little bit, make it look pretty. But before I do that, I want to show you how I wired it because this may be applicable to your, your truck as well. Uh, every truck's a little different. The options, the way you wire it, uh, what you have to work with can all make a difference. But I'll show you how I wired it so that it works for me. It works in this truck because once I get it all cleaned up and made pretty and mounted, it would be difficult to show you. So I'm going to show you in the bare bones version and then I'll make it look pretty. I'm going to start it up so that you can see that the compressor does come on. This is looking at the pinout from lt1swap.com. His original wiring diagram really didn't show using air conditioning. There are some uh, supplemental notes that talk about the air conditioning, depending on what you're using to cycle it. So I need to go back and look at that and see if what I ultimately came up with is something that he has mentioned. But even he admits that he's not an AC pro, and he's found some things that work and obviously some things that don't. Uh, when I was going through the red side, the red pin of the PCM, the two wires I found that worked was number 17, which is your normally your AC request signal. And this is normally a wire that you know he has marked in yellow that you would remove. So you definitely want to go through the wiring diagram and decide, first of all, if you're going to use air conditioning or if you're going to use fans or anything like that, that you may need to keep the wiring and not automatically pull everything that is in yellow. So the number 17 AC request signal you will need, or at least I did on this particular application. Now, the funny thing about some of these AC request uh, or air conditioning uh, lines that are in the PCM is that there are several, uh, four or five, I believe, dark green with white stripe wires in that pin out. So you have to be sure you get the right one. So we went with number 17 as the AC request signal. Now from over here at the PCM, number 17 over here, and I ran it and it goes to the high pressure switch at my accumulator. There are, which is a green wire. Now there are two green wires. If you connect, uh, you can see this is a bare connection. If you connect your uh, number 17 to the switch itself and bypass the other green line, you will have no power in the cockpit. In other words, when you go to press your AC button, that digital display is not lit up. There's no power to it. So that 17 has to go to the other green line that comes off of this. See, this is below your accumulator, and there's two green lines. And one goes to, I should say dark green. Uh, one goes up here to the switch itself, and the light green goes back into the firewall. There is a second dark green wire down here that goes up the other direction. That would have gone to the switch inside the truck. So number 17 is going to go to that green wire, that would be the switch because that 17 has to get the activation 
for that to work. The other wire that worked is number 55. It's a dark green wire and it's labeled as an AC compressor cycling switch signal. Uh, fancy terminology, what we used it for is a ground. And we literally grounded it to one of the, this is the fuse box uh, relay that originally made uh, with the harness that has the main relay and has the fuel pump relay on it along with four fuses. I ran that number 55, that's that green wire right here. I ran it into the, I ran it into the main relay on the ground side. So that provides the ground and that provides the power. Now the compressor has to get the signal. That's what this black wire is right here. So I spliced that black wire from the compressor into this dark green line coming off my AC accumulator. You have to follow it all around and it goes down here, but it goes ultimately to the compressor itself. That will make the air conditioning run. Now, the second part of that is you need your fan to come on at the same time when you, when you initiate the air conditioning. So we wired in a separate relay and I know it looks kind of crazy at the moment, but it's going to look pretty when we're all done. But here's how I wired in the relay. In this position, uh, this is 30 and that's number uh, 87. So in this situation, number 87 at the top has a 30 amp fuse in it. And it goes to my hot side up here. That's, that's hot power, 12 volt battery power. To the right of that, which is number 85, is a ground wire. And it literally is grounded to the chassis over here. The next wire down at the bottom, which was opposite my 30, or opposite my 87, which is 30, this goes directly to my fan. And I tapped into this wire here that was coming off the regular relay for that fan. And then the, the last wire is the actual trigger from the compressor to start that fan. So that when you start the air conditioning system and these, uh, you hit the AC button, it gives a signal to the compressor to come on. At the same time that compressor comes on, you want the fan to come on. So this wire goes down here, and that's why there's three. That bottom one, that green, is coming off of the compressor. And on one side, it goes to uh, the side that will switch on the relay. And the other side goes up here to your trigger, which is the uh, high pressure switch on the accumulator. So I believe I've labeled all that correctly. Got to get got to get it looking pretty, solder all my joints, use the marine heat marine uh, heat shrink uh, to seal those uh, connections really well. And I'll be taking this relay that is all by itself here and I'm going to be putting it inside the box. This is the bottom side of the box that was mounted on the fender well. I'll be putting it on the uh, inside of here along with that 30 amp fuse on this other side. So when I get, get it all looking pretty and put it all back together, I'll show you what that looks like mounted because it, currently that relay box just shows two relays. These are for the fans with 30 amp fuses each. So in a moment when I come back, you'll see there will be a third fuse and a third relay. And that will be this relay that goes for the fan uh, to come on when the AC is activated. And here's the finished relay. The box is mounted again. Now there's three relays, three 30 amp fuses. Everything's been soldered and tested to make sure the connections are accurate and work properly. Still got a bit of a mess here, but there's one last item that needs to be addressed uh, before I can tidy all this up, tape it up, put plastic loom on it and make it look, look nice. And that is the check engine light is on. So now with the temperature sensor reading properly, the fans coming on, the air conditioning working in the air conditioning fan, we've got this all taken care of except for making it look pretty. So I hope you found the video helpful. We've gotten a major thing accomplished today, getting that AC taken care of. And now we're going to move on. And the last thing is to get that check engine light to where it'll work properly, or in this case, not work because it's on. I've already tested it with a remote tester 
and it's not the LS. So somewhere it's connected to the old OBS PCM and that's causing a trouble, I think. So next time we come back, we'll figure out how to fix that. And in the meantime, thank you for watching.